So thank you Evgeny for speaking to Arabian Reseller and Future Tech. Uh, today we have uh, Evgeny from uh, Aviva. He is the Senior Vice President and Head of EMEA Region. Uh, so thank you once again for speaking to us today. Thank you very much for having me, Chris, and really looking forward to our conversation today. Thank you. Uh, so we would like to start with a brief about your participation at EDIPEC uh, 2023. Look, IDPEC is a really, really key event for us for many years. It's a, it's a really global gathering of uh, energy professionals. We are quite engaged with this uh, industry. We are working with an industry for a long time. And really over the last years, and this year, really the focus is moving into the even more exciting topics. Topics of energy transition, topics of um, decarbonization, topics of how we can build up together with the industry professionals, more sustainable world. And in this case, we, we are very active again. We have our CEO, um, Kaspar Hasberg is leading the delegation. Quite a few executives is attending the, the, the IDPAC. A lot of good meetings are scheduled. We are very proud of participating in a um, number of, of, of panel sessions in a strategic conference in a hydrogen uh, strategic conference, in a manufacturing and industrialization uh, uh, conference. Really a lot of engagement with an industry to keep discussing on how we can um, build up a better future. And we in Aviva believe that it is a technology which can really make a huge difference, practical difference already now by using the technology, making sure that we drive the changes we all would like to see. So in terms of the technologies that uh, Aviva offers uh, when it comes to, you know, achieving sustainability goals as well, uh, how do you work with your strategic and alliance partners to help companies or your customers uh, reach their net zero goals? Well, I think the best place will be to answer that question, actually, that to come and visit our stand. Um, but we do believe uh, that, that technology is a key to drive uh, a sustainability uh, agenda. So in our stand, actually, we're going to talk about the three specific areas. Let me first start talking about the connected future, connected industrial future. We believe that by using uh, uh, Aviva uh, Connect in an in a industrial data exchange platform, we will be able to, to use this data for driving the change within the company, within an enterprise, and number of different uh, 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 parts of a uh, uh, bigger organization, or actually beyond the organization, meaning that where the companies start exchanging industrial data for the benefits for driving the energy savings, to drive the energy transition, and working together to make sure that how they, separate companies, can leverage their world resources uh, better. Uh, the second uh, uh, topic area on our goals, we are also going to talk about the building and uh, designing the, the future. This is where we're going to cover how our solution, starting from simulation, can actually help us to already early on simulate the future facilities, which will have the uh, carbon neutrality as their um, the, at, the, at the core of, of what they're trying to to build. We're also going to be covering the fact that how we can design and build the facilities with the least amount of environmental impact, with the least amount of energy being consumed, and we'll be needing to operate that, that facilities in the future. In this area, there's a potentially very significant uh, uh, savings uh, could be made, economical savings, but also, the, as I said, less environmental impact. Then final uh, area of our focus will be to talk about how we can help to operate and optimize the facilities in the future. That's where we we again talking about the connected workers, meaning the workers which are leveraging the industrial uh, data platform and then enrich this with an application which sits on top of that data, utilizes that data by applying the AI technology, by apply, applying the cloud and the supercomputing possibilities to make sure that we find an optimal way to run our facility. With an energy uh, consumption in, the, in mind, 
with uh, finding an uh, optimal point in terms of uh, minimizing the, uh, the emission. And again, with in mind as well to make sure that our operation is still economically uh, uh, viable going forward. So all of these areas will be uh, covered uh, at, um, at IDPEC, and I think we will be very happy to, to, to go into more details while the people are visiting us. You also announced in uh, the Sustainability Pro Progress Report uh, recently. Uh, can you give us uh, an idea of the key findings of this report? We've been very, very uh, focused on the sustainability topics over the last couple of um, uh, years, and specifically those reports has been uh, made public over the, uh, over the last years to make sure that we are not just uh, advocating for industrial world to be more sustainable. We also would like to uh, walk the talk and actually talk about our uh, impact on the on the environment. And over the years, we we are strengthening our um, execution agenda on that to on on that topic. We're looking inside. Right? We're defining the the the, the, the very specific criteria of how we want to achieve the goals. We're strengthening that execution roadmap and plans to achieve every single goal which we have outlined. We're also very proud of engaging with uh, external advisors, validate our plans, and validate the uh, progress on, 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 on that plan. And I think that element of the external impartial uh, view of, of of what we are doing, I think it's very critical uh, in order to make sure that we are uh, staying the true to our ambition and we actually uh, uh, talk to the external providers about the progress um, uh, progress we are, we are making. And I think in this report, I think there's a very, very interesting uh, uh, already practical achievements. I can be probably talking about uh, almost... Um, 90% reduction in the greenhouse emissions uh, from our operational footprint uh, compared to 2020 uh, 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 baseline. That's uh, very significant. Of course, we are continue and looking beyond. We are looking at the scope three uh, uh, emission reduction, and uh, this is where we are ta uh, targeting things like uh, like business travel and and so on. So. That are very, very practical examples of where we are making a, a, a very good progress. And we have further um, outlined in the future uh, future plans. We've got the plan until 2025, 15 very specific areas of what we want to, to achieve uh, in, in, uh, in against the age of our metric. And we will continue reporting that so people would know that we are, we are looking inside of our own organization as much as we are engaging with it, with it, with it, um, with our clients to make sure that uh, we're making a difference. Uh, can you also tell us about Aviva's plans for COP28? COP28 in IDPEX this year has got a lot in common, isn't it? Uh, uh, both in, 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 in UIE, uh, both is very, very focused on decarbonization, on the energy transition, hydrogen economy, and the supply chain. Uh, uh, related to it, so I think that um, it's really encouraging to 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 have those uh, those events uh, 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 happening. For us, COP twenty eight is 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 super important because I think it is really driving force to make sure that we are actually going from discussing a good ideas and intentions to practical uh, steps which will be done by both. The governments and the and the businesses together to achieve the, the common uh, common goals which you all understand and we sign up for. But then again, we are we need to make sure that we understand what the practical steps can be taken. Therefore, again, technology we believe will be a huge differentiator in helping the businesses to drive this this transition. And we will be using the COP28 platform to again offering an opinion of how practically we can deliver the, 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 the steps, which again, the, the countries, the, the societies can, can make in order to make sure that we are using the remaining time which we have, again, the, the very ambitious uh, um, goals we have uh, outlined to, 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 again, to achieve those goals um, without the further delay. 
in terms of achieving net zero goals, uh, how according how important going to you is uh, energy transition and are bigger steps being taken towards achieving these goals? I think that the net zero is is a very 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 ambitious plan, very complex plan to achieve, and and energy transition is of course uh, one key element there. But also we have to remember, right? We 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 are we are. We're expecting uh, quite a significant increase in, a, in a energy demand. By um, uh, by uh, 2050, we're planning to, to have the 47% increase in the energy demand, and that will require to solve very complex uh, uh, puzzle, right? Energy for them, how we can deal with it, the 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 energy um, securely, how we make make the energy affordable, and then in the same time. How we can actually hit our net uh, net zero uh, uh, commitments, and in this case, again, we will be have to be working with uh, with an existing facility, decarbonizing it, making sure that we're using the the least impactful uh, energy sources. How we can drive the energy uh, um, savings uh, at, the, at the at existing kind of uh, of facilities, and then of course. On top of it, right, we have to be very clearly focusing on the energy transition, new source of energy. The hydrogen comes to mind as, as the one which is very clear and that an ambitious plan. Also, a complex considering the fact how many different stakeholders will have to be involved in this transition. So, yes, I think that is it is a key, and and we are very happy again to see how the industry businesses. But also regulatory bodies, the governments work together to make sure that we are we are tackling this problem in its full complexity, versus going one by one. Because I think that in this case it will be very difficult. It takes much longer than it should be, or more longer than we have actually now. Uh, thank you again for speaking to us. Uh, nice having you with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.